Hi, this is Open Research Institute. This is our exhibit at RF Village. We're so happy to be here again. It's a wonderful place. What we do is open source digital radio. Uh, we're a nonprofit, so we solve problems for space and terrestrial open source work, and then we give all that work away for free. We do technical work. Uh, so here behind us is one of our posters from the poster session. And this is about authentication and authorization for open source satellites. Wait, so hold, hold on. Did you just say open source satellites? Like anyone, yes. like, can I, I feel like this is a dumb question, but can I put up a satellite? Is that a thing? You can, you can put up a satellite. Legally? Yes, legally you can put up a satellite. How? Well, <laughs> we've been putting up satellites for decades uh, and there is actually an, an amateur satellite service. So just like amateur radio, there's amateur satellite service as well. And so that's what most of our work is aimed at because sa amateur satellite and amateur radio is such a great way to experiment with open source digital radio. And so that's one of the things we do. We do technical work to make it easier to understand. And we also have done a lot of regulatory work to make it safe for people to volunteer to work on open source communication satellites because those are controlled by the government mm -hmm. under two sets of regulations, ITAR and EAR. And so one of the things that we did is to set up a framework uh, to make it easy to, to volunteer for that. Okay, pa pause it. You said I, ITAR and ETAR. What are the... Uh, ITAR and EAR. They're two different sets of regulations. ITAR is from the U.S. State Department, and EAR is from the Commerce Department. Uh -huh. So essentially what we did is we said, you know, we need this framework to be useful for open source volunteers. We went out and did it. So we have a poster about that too. Okay. I, I want to get back to the whole idea of like, I can throw a satellite up in the air. How does that even work? Like, what are the steps I would have to take to oh, get yeah, my own satellite up? Well, yeah, usually you work with a, an organization or a group or a company. Uh, and what you have to do is solve a whole bunch of problems. So one of the reasons that we exist is because there's such a huge variety of different problems. And we think that they should be solved in an open source way. Mm -hmm. So you have mechanical, you have electrical, communications, thermal, propulsion, attitude control, and a lot of regulatory work. So it's Wait, a huge you, interdisciplinary problem. And that's open source, like just yes. freely available. Yes. So how do you get, like, how do you, you fund it? Is it funded out of donations? Is it funded out of sponsorships? Yeah, in general, amateur radio, uh, amateur satellites have been funded through uh, donations or in-kind contributions uh, through it for, for many decades. Uh, there's an amateur satellite that happened right almost after Sputnik. So this is something that's been going on for decades. And it's been done by a, a really dedicated, wonderful uh, group of people over time. So, so the answer is yes, you can do it. And it's usually funded by donations uh, or, or you know, either donations from individuals or from companies. Because, because the question I have is like, so I want to get involved. I'm, this is fascinating that you can just have open source all of this. Because at a certain point, it, it feels like these are secret things. They were. For the longest, it was very difficult to volunteer and to, to do this in the open. Um, so that, that was one of the first things that we had to tackle, was to, to help make it safe from a regulatory point of view to do it. Because the vast majority of satellite work is done under closed or proprietary conditions. Mm -hmm. And it is, there are some stiff penalties if you we break these regulations. It can be very expensive for you and, and very scary. And we don't want volunteering or open source to be scary. Mm -hmm. so, so one of the questions I had is like, if. I want to get involved. You, 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 I, I learn it all. Is there practical applications I can do as an individual, or do I need to work with like a company or a bigger group to be able to do anything with yeah, it? Yeah, your, your best bet is to join a team. Uh, there's lots of teams at universities. Uh, there's teams like us that are nonprofits. Uh, there's amateur radio organizations all over the world that do uh, wonderful work in the amateur satellite service. So there's lots of opportunities to do this. And there's a few commercial companies where you could probably uh, you know, either, either end up working there mm -hmm. uh, or the few that do open source work would actually take you on. Uh, and those are the paths. That's cool. Now, the village is huge. There yes, seems to be, is. there's tons of talks going yes. on. There's a CTF. Can you tell me a little bit about the CTF going on? Like what, what type of aspects are in it? Yeah, this is a wonderful aspect of this village. And so it's generally uh, Wi-Fi based, uh, but not exclusively. Um, it's, and your challenge is that you sit down with a, either an SDR uh, or uh, yeah, usually a software defined radio of some sort, and you take on the challenges. And there's a huge variety. So 
When you take on the challenges, you have, you have a software-defined radio. Are you you're scanning for the challenges, scanning through the frequencies, you're trying to find, connect and communicate and maybe dump the information? Is Just that... like any good question, the answer is it depends. Because okay. there's a huge variety of ways to do a wireless CTF like this. So you might have to find like a, something in the payload. You might have to demodulate or decode something that's uh, it's not quite standard. Uh, you might have to find something that's really obscure. Uh, so it, there's a, just an immense variety. Okay. You know, as you go around and talk to the folks up at the front, they're going to be able to tell you all sorts of the neat things that are going on this year. Excellent. Hey, thank you so much for your of time. Course. Thank you. I'm guessing openresearch.institute is how people get yes. involved. Yeah, we have a getting started link at openresearch.institute. Everyone is welcome. You do not have to be an expert to join. You just have to be willing to become more of one along the way. We're here to help people learn about open source digital radio for space and terrestrial. And we also have some demos over here of things that are working and some stickers and some patches and some buttons and all sorts of fun things. Excellent. Thank you so much for of your course. time. Thanks for Thank watching you. and hack on.